Corbin, I think we need a new theme song. Oh. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so what I've been thinking is, what about something like, the moving spotlight. Yeah, yeah, keep it going. It goes from left to right. <laughs> you know? I love it. What it's, you... it's so good. I think we need a better singer. I don't know if that's wow. you... <laughs> okay. I already got fired. I already, already got, got fired. fired. Hey, you're a great, okay. great writer. You know, you have a vision, and I love that. <laughs> what about moving spotlight, moving spotlight, moving spotlight, Ooh, with moving the little spotlight? Drums. Yeah, the little drums. <laughs> I, was, I was doing it on my desk. I don't know if you picked that up. A little. We could get that in Foley, which yeah, they yeah, do yeah. later. <laughs> later on <laughs> or we could just stick with what we've got as an intro yeah um i don't know how important our, our theme song is because if we've got a guest like we've got today mm. no one's even going to listen to the theme song <laughs> they're going to get true. right to the meat the meat <laughs> of what we've got um this is someone i've actually known for a long time uh he is a life business and career coach uh for actors and for content creators uh, i want to welcome to the show brian pataka Brian, yep. how are you, buddy? Good. So glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so excited oh to have you. God. We yeah. are excited to have you. First of all, I just want to say, if for people watching on YouTube, the design behind you is is freaking awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your design aesthetic from? I think I looked at other people and was like, that's ugly and I don't want that. Like I usually think every, everything, everything I've ever come up with has been like, oh, I hate that. I'm going to do something completely different. Like I, I, one of the things in my business, we have this value that's called rebel with a cause, which is like, we really value rebellious things. Mm -hmm. So I think that one of the places we figure out where to make something is when something annoys us or we don't like so. This is I got real serious all of a sudden, but that's where it came from. Is like, you know, okay. I want to be able, I want to have a, I want to have something that looks good on camera. So you know, when you put this on YouTube, people are like, oh, what's that about? It looks sharp. It looks sharp. Hey. So Brian, my intro was like, I give myself like a B minus because I'm not great at it. Tell, why don't you introduce yourself much better than me, so so people know. I'll try it. That I don't you know. know if I have a song because I really dug. <laughs> and you have to like sing. That? You have to sing the whole I time. Right. I just can't. I'm trying to figure out the hook would be, and I don't know yet what that would be. I feel like there'd be like you need to get like. Um, yeah, but you need to get somebody on that, I think. Backup, sing um, backup singers? Yeah, yeah. Some, ba yeah some backup singers. What's Beyonce totally. have to? Could, could she yeah, pitch? Totally. Yeah, totally. He's around. Um, yeah, Bay, Bay is okay. good. She's good. So what do I do? Who am I? I who am I? Um, 24601. Um, I am uh, – I started out as an – I'll make this brief. I started as an actor. I loved acting. I made my living as an actor. Um, and I'm from the Midwest and I think we have really strong work ethics in the Midwest. And so it was never enough to just be an actor. I always wanted to be doing something else. Um, my first like survival job was at an advertising agency and I fell in love with marketing and copywriting and all that stuff. And so that part of a career where most people don't have any, that part of a career can be harder for people. Like the, the businessy side of things was very natural, came kind of organically to me because I'd worked in advertising for so long. And then after years of being an actor i was in new york and i was successful in new york then i moved to la and then when i got to la after auditioning a few times that's when i met john i think it was probably 2010. Mm -hmm. um 2010 is the same thing as 2010. Is it? <laughs> just for the young people it felt yeah, so weird yeah. to say that just now um so <laughs> um so uh I was getting auditions and I was getting annoyed every time I got an audition. And I wasn't getting annoyed for the normal reasons that actors get annoyed. Like, oh shit, I have to, I said a bad word. Um, I have to change <laughs> okay. my, I have to, I have to move my schedule tomorrow. I have to move things around. Like I think everyone gets that little bit of like, oh, I got to move things around thing. I was actually getting annoyed because I was having to cancel on coaching clients mm -hmm. and having to not mm -hmm. see my clients. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And I was like, oh shoot, I like coaching and being sitting across from my clients mm -hmm. better than I like acting. And it was like such a easy turn for me to make as opposed to some people can really be wrought and feel like they're quitting. It never felt like quitting. It felt like, oh, this is the, this is the now more aligned thing for me to do. And so um, for about two decades now, all the way back from when I was in New York, I have been coaching actors on the business. And to me, the business is more than the business. Uh, I'm a reverend also, so I have life coach training, but I also am a non-denominational reverend. So I have a very spiritual bent to my belief uh -huh. around if you're called to being an actor, then that's what you better do. Like that's, it's a responsible thing for you to do while you're here on this planet because the rest of us need you to do that. And so my purpose in helping um, uh, actors is that they are able to have a business that lets them have the impact that they're meant to have, that they're born to have, that's their birthright to be acting and to be making the impact that they want. And that part of my coaching has been where it's the most valuable and the most fun. So, Love that. you know, to see people like suddenly remember, oh, yeah, when I was eight years old and I heard the heard the voice or I got the intuition that I'm meant to be an actor and that that can be what drives you day to day can feel so foreign, you know, 
so that's everything. I mean, I really went on a lot there. <laughs> I love it. I love, I love it. it. Yeah. What you talked about um, uh, the business side of things, which I think is is great. How do you view when you think about like the craft side and the business side, since you've kind of seen both sides of it, uh, Brian, yeah. how do you, how do you, you know, talk to people about balancing that or finding that or, you know, when to put their energies where? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think the first thing that we have to acknowledge is something that I said before, which is if we can believe and have faith that it is a divine truth that you are meant to and will be the actor that you are meant to be and have the career that you're meant to have, all of the actions that come after that are, I don't want to say that they're easy, but they are one foot in front of the other. It does not have to be because this agent liked me or didn't like me, my life is over. Because I got a rep or I didn't get a rep, I, I my acting is invalidated. Because I got that job or didn't get that job, or because I didn't have a good night in acting class, maybe I'm not meant to be an actor in the first place. So the questioning of your purpose, I think, is where a lot of actors, or the giving away of the question of your purpose, like it's so easy for us to give that into the hands of an acting teacher or to an agent or to a manager to validate what's been given to you by the universe, God, whatever you use to say to be an actor. If you have to be, I think you have to be so much more possessive over your purpose that it is that part is determined. So to me, the balance around it is if that's the truth, okay, one foot in front of the other, risk kind of goes away because I think actors have this whole mm. like, where's the blacklist out there that's waiting for me to make the wrong step? Like no one has enough time to think about you that much. But everyone <laughs> has just like I'm going to take the wrong yeah. step, I'm going to do the wrong thing, or I don't know what to do, and they throw their hands up, right? So. I'm very not risk averse uh, because I have yet, I mean, we probably can count on our hands the number of actors who've really stepped in it so badly that they never get to work again, right? So that, either those two things I fear what, what fight with someone when they're trying to balance the business versus the craft is doing something wrong, not doing anything at all, and putting their purpose into the hands of someone else. My validated, validate me for saying that I want to be an actor. Um, mm -hmm. And the sad part is, you know, sad good part is we all had parents. Or at least most people did, uh, yes. and so uh, of some sort, and or people who were in the position of a parent, and so we bring all that baggage to the relationship with agents, managers, acting teachers. We can very easily slip into projecting that onto them to validate acting mm -hmm. is what I'm meant to be doing, and I think that is the. That's why it's difficult. That's why it's tough. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I, right? I, that's why it can be tough, right? And so there's got to be a piece of balance. And I think the balance, again, you asked me about balance and I went on this big, long thing, but the point of this is <laughs> yeah. balance is a lie. Let me just start there. Mm. Um, balance is a continual shifting moment to moment to be in the present and feel like you're safe, right? And so I think that by trying to reach for balance, you are lying to yourself because on one day you're going to have three auditions and one day you're going to have zero. You cannot control that piece of the balance. What you can relate, the part you can't control is yourself and the way you relate to it. My life is a roller coaster and its activity of acting stuff. And so if I can regulate myself to some days I'm busier and the next day I get to have this beautiful long phone call with my mom because I didn't have three auditions and then I got to be with my daughter or whatever it is. I don't have a daughter. That was like projecting onto John there you go. Right. So, right. So, uh, does that make sense? What I just said? Yeah. 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 I'm, I don't know if I answered it, but I gave you my perspective on it. Great. Right? I love it. Yeah. I'm kind of curious with, with that too, is it's, um, being an entrepreneur or being somebody that you are, are, uh, kind of your own boss and figuring that out as an actor or yeah, everything you do with life coaching and everything. How do you stay on top of that when you are having, you know, three days of craziness and one day off? And like, how do you not feel, like you said, crazy and not wanting to like uh, dump on yourselves, but still keep going forward, you know? Well, I will say for me, it's a little simpler. Like I'm not acting at all anymore. Like that's not part of my life. It hasn't been for years. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not having to balance that kind of up and down piece of it. And the P one thing that I can say is a great gift so feel it, feel it interrupt me, Corbin, if you want me to answer different questions. No, but I think it. the thing that I have a gift now is I am consistently having to be accountable to my clients. I got to show up for them on those calls and I got to show up in a way that I have the energy that I can show up and be there for them and have the language that's going to hear them where they're at. And so to me, that's about me continually to be in my training and stuff. But then the other thing is I've got a team that I'm accountable to, which is why I think so helpful. We hear about people who are in accountability groups that it helps them so much because, oh, they're waiting on this for me. Like that helps me so much to feel engaged. Like I, even though my business is entirely online, um, I long for the day to be like in an office with my team and like to be like, I'm a big, yeah. like, let's get on Zoom and work together. Like I'm a very collaborative <laughs> kind of person. Like I much prefer to be around other people when I'm working. Um, and so... The balance for me is to be able to turn this 
computer off and walk away. So I think just like an actor, if you could act every minute of the day or put energy into your career in, in a way that you knew every action you took was paying off, like there's some kind of freedom that comes in that. Um, because as much as any actor listening or anybody else who's listening loves their job, I love my work as much, right? So I love doing it. So, yeah. I think that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm reading a book right now that I really recommend called Atomic Habits. We just I, talked about it on my podcast for the last two episodes. Uh, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Please say, what are your takeaways that you need to share with me right now? Well, I was going to just keep it real simple, you know, by James Clear, which is um, with what you're saying, Brian – falling in love with the process versus the result, you know, and I think it sounds like what's really great is, you know, you are enjoying that day to day process, whether it's meeting with your team, whether it's meeting with actors versus and then the result will come around. And I, I think, you know, with what we're talking about here is that idea of how do you fall in love with with the process of, you know, whatever balance you can find or the, the business side or the act, the craft side. And that's really what's going to drive you day to day versus the 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 results or the outcome because that can be more sporadic and out of your control at times yeah like who did, i think that yeah one of the things that i i so i'm with you on this vibing with you on what james clear says because he says you know who being the make your habits around being the person you want to be right and so if yeah. i'm the person who wants to uh, be a boss who encourages ideas from all of my teammates or team members at any time, or if I'm the person, there's a habit that gets to be like, oh great, I will offer certain kinds of praise every single time, or I'll start to get into a habit of opening the meeting a different way, or that kind of stuff. So, I so I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, and I I, I think about it, uh, Brian, sometimes with this idea of uh, like watering a plant, which is like if you pour more water on the plant, it doesn't grow any faster. <laughs> you have to do it every day. You know what yeah. I mean? So the excess yeah. water isn't helping you. It might also but, hurt the plant. Let's it be could real. probably kill it. It could yeah. kill it, you know? Right. And I think that's sometimes when people hold stuff so tight or try to do it all, you know, and it is kind of that continual, that continual um, growth. Um, so, Brian, when you're working with actors, what's uh, – obviously, I can tell you love people, an extrovert like myself – um, which my spouse is, and I'm curious about yours, but uh, that could be a side. That could be a side thing. Okay. Um, um, but what's your favorite part about what you do? Like, what what do you what do you um, you know what are, what are some of the highlights for you with what you do to help actors? I got really thoughtful when you say that just now because you know the other day I was walking and I was like, I will get on a call with my clients. I have like a, group, a membership program, and so I see a, a, a group of them every every other Thursday, uh, and I it is like Christmas morning to me to light up that call because mm -hmm. it is I feel the most alive I feel most aligned with my purpose I feel most like I know how to deliver and the part that I think I love the most is the surprise that I often see I have another coach who calls the spark where there's something that you're afraid of an actor will be afraid of I'm afraid to send them a person an email I'm afraid to reach out to my agent I don't know how to get this headshots right I am I real this whatever the thing is in front of them right um, and there is a simplicity and truth that seems to come out when we're co-creating that moment together, when there's the co-creating of that coaching together. Because coaching isn't Brian coaching you. I think that it's co-creating the moment of what that person is bringing into the coaching at the same time. I'm not the one who has the solutions all the time. I'm often the one who's like helping you find the solution on your own. Um, and I think that there's something around when the answer gets arrived at, when the action stuff gets arrived at in this peace comes over the actor that just is like lit up and excited to go do it um i love to see i mean i think i live to see that moment and then i also mm -hmm. love to see the moment when the actor who's come to the, i mean this is going to sound perverse but like when someone comes to the call and they're really like i'm stuck i'm totally mm -hmm. stuck i don't know what to do next i'm thinking about giving up let's really go all those colors and the actor is like willing to say that and be witnessed by another human being whether that's just me or it's in their group coaching and I, I, this call last week, I remember I was speaking to a, a client and I said, she goes, well, what if I find out that, you know, all the work I'm putting in isn't worth it? I go, well, then you're going to have to give up acting. And it was like <laughs> the most revolutionary thing that anyone in the call had ever heard. Mm. Uh, and it was like, oh, I go, you know that you make a choice every single day to be an mm. actor. And we sometimes think that the only choice we make is to quit. But the mm. other choice is so empowering that you're you're making that choice every day and that acknowledgement alone is such an important piece of it. And so I think I love to see when the actor realizes um, both their impact that they're meant to have and that it doesn't have to look like anyone else's in the world. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's a really tough. I think a lot of, I mean, everyone, of course, Instagram does not help this. And also it can help this, but we, everyone's comparing and what is that person booking and how'd they get that audition? And we all know what TV shows are on all the, do we even call them TV shows anymore? And all <laughs> that, we know all the series that are on, right? Uh-huh. Um, so we know all the series that are out, right? We all know every show and who's getting what jobs or whatever. And even then your acting career still doesn't need to look like anybody else's. And I think that, you know, you've probably heard this in a thousand different ways from a thousand different people, but to be reminded in that moment of that desperation about that. Um, I remember an actor once on a call, she was like, I think I just want to do avant-garde theater. And I was like, then what the fuck are we talking about here? Sorry, bad word, but like we need, that bad word needed to be said. I was like, why are we yeah. bothering for yeah. you to chase these things that the person next to you is chasing that mean nothing to yeah. what it is you're called to do, right? So I think that when we say actor, it's like, this is the this is the what an actor looks like. You're either on Broadway or you do TV and film, and this is the this is what that looks like. Actually, like no, there's so many different places of this, and you're doing voiceover or whatever. So, um, acknowledging the different places you're called to, I think, it is a is hard to do as an actor because so many people are taking a straight and narrow path. Yours does not have to look that way. So I love it. Your question, I'm going on quite a long ways, but your question about that was, for me is, watching the actor recognize that over and over again, that every day is a choice and every day they're choosing which direction, they're, they're choosing the direction that they're going. I, I love that. I, what I was thinking about, Brian, is this idea of um, uh, kind of the, I remember when my wife first, I saw her say no to it, like an audition. So I say yes to everything. I'm like such a hustler, you know, uh, similar to yourself, Brian. We're always doing stuff. We're always moving. And she said no. And I was like, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why would you say no? Like, no, this is an opportunity, you know? And like, it was like outside my frame of what I could like accept. And I, it's, it was kind of eye-opening to me that that is an option, if that makes sense. Because when you've yeah. really been working so hard just to get opportunities, it's felt weird to say no to an opportunity. But I think about that with what you just said. And, you know, one of the things, and Corbin knows I talk about this, is like, you know, a powerful actor who could be kind of a, uh, he or she could be a jerk, a powerless actor who gives it away, and then an empowered actor. And mm-hmm. it's like, how do you find that empowerment for yourself with the stuff you want to do and the, the goals you're heading towards? Yeah, you know? I see, and I see this all the time, John, is when, so one of the, I help, I'm really good at helping actors get managers and agents. It's something that I've really kind of, I know how to do this. I can get an agent. I can get an agent or manager for an actor. So what happens is when they get meetings and they get multiple meetings, I've seen time and time again an actor get overwhelmed by the fact that they're suddenly given that much power because mm-hmm. it is so rare. Where like someone will be in tears in front of me because they got seventeen meetings. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, "Okay, this is what you wanted," and also you've never known. Like our bodies are sometimes dysregulated to joy or abundance. And so now you have to make a decision on top of it. You have to decide who's good and who's not good or who you want. Not who, they're all good, but who do you like better, right? And what you just described, I think, is such a – no, I think, is one of those powerful words in, words in the English language. I think you, I'm not the first person who said that, but it is such a – it's also one of the most attractive words in the English language, right? You're going to attract so much more by that, right? And, there's a, of course, there's a graceful no and a jerk no, but I think that <laughs> what, what you're talking about when you say that is our ability to see – Yes, there are situations where it's an audition and someone else is going to be choosing you, but where's the places where you chose to prepare, wore what you wore that day or whatever, put that on tape the way you put that on tape, that there are pieces in this where you do have control over this part of the journey. And to me, if you can say, I love my acting in that tape, you win, Mm -hmm. you win, right? Like you can say, I'm confident I put my head down on my my pillow and feel really proud of myself that day. Um, I think it's important to have I'm curious your thoughts too, Brian. It's like having a goal is kind of what you're saying. It's like, because then you can say no to those things. Once you have those like bowling alley barriers, you know, then you're like, know where you're going at least at that point. I'm wondering like, how do you frame that to people? Because I do know that inherently doesn't show up in a lot of day to day. I I actually have a big marketing agency background as well and all that kind of stuff too. So like, to me, it just comes inherently because I'm like, oh, I have to work 16 hours and I'm trying to get this thing done. And like, I don't, that doesn't always compute with people and uh, you don't have to do what I did and all that kind of stuff. But um, just curious, how do you frame it in a way that they know what they want so that they can say those no's they can say, or pick one of 17 agents and managers. Cause that's sure. important. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll say, I love that you said the bowling alley kind of thing. Cause to me, I think, I think of it as like, what's your filter for yes or no. Yeah. Cause I think a filter is different than a goal. Cause a goal is like, I'm going to book a series regular. 
right, is a little different than am I taking the actions of a series regular? And so, like, does this fit into the filter of that? And sometimes you can be a real snot nose about this. You can be a real bitch about it, right? You'd be like, I don't want to do that. doesn't pay any money. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, okay. And also, you this director is super cool, and they're using a real casting director this time. And, like, so, like, not that everyone should work for free. I don't believe that. But I just sometimes are – we can get short-sighted in our willingness to say yes. John apparently will not. He'll say yes to everything. <laughs> yes. But around, <laughs> ar ar around no, I don't. every no does not need to be a defiant no. Is mm -hmm. that something I think to kind of think about, right? I had to think about it for a long time, and – Yes, I can finally say no to them. Like, you can just say it's not a big deal. Like, no does not have to have this much energy around it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think a filter for that. So, one of the ways that I work with um, some of the people inside of my membership program is we have quarterly, like, what are the quarterly aims that you have so that at the end of the year, you're working towards that big thing that you want, right? And again, it has to come back to what we talked about with James, James Clear and Atomic Habits is what are the behaviors of someone who is a series regular which is different than i'm booking a series regular because it's just going to be so like there's a piece of this that you can't control right and so i think about athletes a lot right like of course i'm going to give my all when i go to that 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 you know the, the world championship race we have to go to and i gotta do my 200 meter dash i do not know a lot about sports so just go with it everyone. no i love it i love <laughs> right. that improv right. i can see you yeah, finding yeah, yeah. it and you found <laughs> right. it, you right. my it. Brain you thing, right. so yes. like i gotta do my 200 meter dash i gotta do a good job so like yes you're gonna do a great job at any audition you have along the way but that doesn't mean you're not training the other times or looking mm -hmm. at other people who are running and what does their form look like and like what shoes should i be wearing really go in there for you with this analogy right now <laughs> so uh i think corvin for me i think of it as a filter as if, and the, the way I like to ask the question is, if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? Mm. I love that. So that I can say, I always say like, don't say yes to anything, say maybe to anything and then go think about it and then come back and say yes. Mm -hmm. Say, let me get back to you. Because I think too many of us move too quickly and I think you very rarely make mistakes when you go slow. Yeah. And so if you get an audition, you get an opportunity, your friends like, come do my web series. Like, yes. And like, okay, wait, how about before you say yes, you go, when are you guys shooting? Let me ask some more questions. What days are you shooting? Do you know how long the days are gonna be? Da, da, da. Great, let me go look at my calendar. Cool, oh, I have to go the next day to a wedding? Oh, shit, no, maybe not that day. Do you, could I move it to Monday? I'd love to do it and I can give you guys about, this is where we then get to, if we don't ask those questions beforehand, we say yes to it, we shoot the day before the wedding, we hate our friends and we resent them and we hate the project <laughs> and the footage sucks and we hate everybody and we hated it from the beginning, right? We kind of yeah. manifested that whole thing. So to me, the filter is always maybe, and let me get back to you. Give me a second. Like, give me a second is the answer. <laughs> give me a second. And yeah. then you just go sit. And pr for me, part of that would be probably like meditating or praying or whatever you do where you connect with something greater than yourself to say, is this meant for me, is a piece of the conversation. And some people have a real facility with just knowing like, yep, this is in my path. Some of you need to get quiet. If you're stuck, I always say like, how can you hear the universe for a second? What's the way you get quiet and you listen? Um, and everybody – can hear that piece of the world i think that that the universe in some way or another whether that's like oh don't go down that dark alley or <laughs> or it's like oh maybe i shouldn't have the french fries with the cheese today like whatever that voice is as long as it's not a shaming <laughs> voice is probably a voice that is meant for good for you yeah. well when something happens in life we have that period before we respond many right. much of the time and sometimes we take advantage of that and sometimes we don't and and, and i i think that idea of maybe let me get back to you brian is great because it lets you sit with it for a little bit and kind of step back and i always think that sometimes we it's excruciating when we're deciding something and it doesn't have to like you said like surrounding the no it doesn't have to be as big of a deal as you're kind of making it out yeah. to be you know um brian i want to ask you what advice do you have for uh, like a young actor who's you know, maybe about to move to LA or New York or has just moved here. You know, what, what do you, where, where do you think, um, uh, what, what advice would you give? Don't move. No, <laughs> no. Uh, I would say, no, that's totally a joke. Uh, cool. I would just question your motives for moving here. I think it's important. What is mm. it you're after? Mm. So, uh, are you after, do you want to work with really great artists who are making the kind of art that you want at the top of their game? That's a great reason to move to LA. I want to be making film and TV and I want to be with the people who are at the top of the writers at the top of the game and the film top of the game. Like, that's what I want, right? Or do you want to do theater? I want to be at a place where I might be able to make my living and or like working consistently in theater, I want to go to New York. Like, so you're really asking that question of yourself and you're not imagining if you're moving out, I'm going to be able to do it all is actually unfair to yourself when you first move to a new city. I think really letting go of the idea of, I'm going to make my living from acting, let go of that idea right away 
because then you can be a little more free from the pressure that you put on acting. Because I think that's one of the most pressure cooker things you can put on yourself is that's how I want to make my career, right? I want to make all my living from acting because what happens is this is where I see the, this is where I see people quit because you're like, yeah, I'm just not working my career because I'm really working my day job like 20, 30 hours a week. It's like, oh, so what about the rest of the hours of the week? Those are what you can work on your career. Yeah, but they're not, I'm not, I'm working on my job. The reason why it feels like you're giving all your energy to your job is you know how to show up at your job and you don't know how to show up in your career. Mm. I serve the table, I bring the drink or da-da, or I maybe work at an advertising agency 20 hours a week, right? And I know how to move the paper. I know exactly what to do in my position. When I am not there, no one else is asking me to to walk towards my acting career. No one else is asking me to clock in. And so I don't feel like I'm in my career, nor do I feel like I'm making movements toward my career. And people can misread that as a sign of, maybe I'm not meant to do this, or misread that as a sign of, uh, I don't know how to do this, or that the business is hard. The, sure, the business is hard. This is why I think, you know, I steal this phrase from recovery. I'm not in recovery, but I think this phrase is really powerful, which is, uh, they'll use this in an NAA and stuff, and it says, your own best thinking got you here. And so I say, cool, get someone else's thoughts to be with you. Get a coach, find a acting teacher, be in a community of people. So the first thing that I say to, as I'm circling the, circling the, what do you say? Circling the something? Just circling the drain? Yeah, to say? maybe, <laughs> no. Circling the equator? The circling the uh, equator? Uh, circling the globe. Uh, <laughs> I think you're making uh, it right, up. Is, uh, yeah, making it up. Uh, is get into a freaking class as soon as you get in LA. Get into a good class. Jeez, Louise, get into a good class, not a bad one. Uh, and get into a good class right away because you'll make a community of actors who will be next to you, who will know more than you, and be willing to be a beginner. Be willing to allow people to show you the way. Um, and bring some money. Bring some money. Don't come with no money. Like, yeah. It's hard to come with zero dollars. Like, sure, get a job when you get here, but like a little bit of like, I know when I first get there, it's going to give me a little bit of a cushion to be able to get in an acting class. Because that class will become a community that are your friends in mm -hmm. LA. So it's going to provide both for you in a beautiful way. So I don't, wouldn't want you to come here and be like, I have to climb up a hill before I'm even going to get into class. And I just feel like it leaves you feeling very lonely. And I, I would never want that experience for someone. Or if you've got, you know, a church or a community or something you're a part of, that'll take care of that, I guess. But I think, um, Finding yourself into a class first thing. Well, well yeah, and if, and if if finances are a headache when you first get here, a lot of times, you know, I'll deal with actors where they work a long day and then they have no energy left. They're yeah. like, all my energy went to that. And they're like, I just don't have anything left in the tank. And that yeah. is a really challenging place to work from. Sometimes you have to, but y you also find when that <laughs> is a little looser, you know, when the tie is a little looser around your neck with that idea, then you have more energy to give towards your creative for towards sure. your acting, towards your writing, towards oh, you for know, sure. spending time, right? I, I know an act teacher who says, uh, tend to your own acre first. Like you have to have a life that is set up to have an acting career. Otherwise, you're just fighting with your life the whole time. And so it becomes mm -hmm. bigger than your acting. That isn't to say you need to have a million dollars in the bank when you – I mean, I surely did. None of us had that probably when we came to L.A., right? Like I've got all set when I get there, right? You figure it out as you go. But I think what you're saying is be okay with having a dang job. Oh, wait, more advice. This is this is my biggest piece of advice, pet peeve. Yeah. Quit trying to find a freaking job that's flexible. No one needs you to be flexible. You have zero <laughs> auditions. Get a damn job yeah. that pays you good money. Yeah. Maybe it even has insurance. And by the time you are so indispensable to that company, you can then go to your boss and say, okay, I'm getting auditions now, so we got to change things around here. Is it okay for me to go to auditions from time to time or is it not okay? That is, I believe, such a horrible fallacy that actors feel like they have to get the flexible job right away. It is not important when you first come to like get a job that you can work 40 hours a week, go to your acting class on Sunday or Wednesday night and you feel great because you got that money in the bank and like don't worry about the flexibility till you need the flexibility. And you are smart enough and brave enough to be able to go into your boss. Do not make this someday conversation you're gonna have with your boss so big that you can't do this where you can go say, okay, I have to quit or okay i need a flexible schedule or i have to quit that is one of the biggest mistakes i see actors make all the time i have a buddy who uh i'm not going to say who it was brian but when he was out here and he was looking for not even a waitery job i think it was more like busting tables and he's a smart guy and he went into the interview and he he called me afterwards i was like i was like how did it go He's like, oh, I don't think I got it. And I was like, well, why? He's like, well, I started to tell him kind of how to run the restaurant, <laughs> like better. <laughs> and I go, that's not what you were, that's not what you were interviewing for, right? And, and so, like, no, if you're, I, mm -hmm. I think it's okay to be like, 
a smart person and and take a job that's like not testing everything in your brain and that's okay yes. that's part of it you know what i mean like i said i was like well i want to be challenged and i i should i'm smarter than my boss or i should be the boss. you know it's like well no you're not going to be there that long you're not putting in the 20 you don't like, want to be that you don't want to be that right that's not no. your that's your goal i think you do have to i think it's important if you can it depends on how your brain works right but if you can have a job where you clock in and clock out and you don't take it home again yeah that's more important than a flexible schedule when you first get to LA. You're not going home thinking about, oh, I got to do this tomorrow better. Or like that. You're not having to do work in your brain before the next day of work, I think is more important. One of my first gigs in LA uh, was uh, they were building the Ronald Reagan Hospital at UCLA. And what I would do, it was a temp agency. Uh, Brian, you'll appreciate this. So I'd put on my hard hat and I'd go by all the guys who were, you know, doing the construction, and give them, you know, the nod and stuff. And then I get to the basement and then I take off the hard hat and then I do data entry for like six hours. And it was so <laughs> mindless. It was like solely mindless, but it was a paycheck. It took no energy. Yeah. Uh, and yes. I did that, you know, and, and it was a great job to help pay the bills in a sense and gave me the, the flexibility to take improv, to do other things, to have the energy, you know, yeah. at the beginning uh, to support myself. You know, and I yeah, think, and that's I think really... it's such a big lie. I think it's such a just a lie that you have to have a flexible schedule to start, which is frustrating. Yeah. It's so painful too. Yeah. It's so painful. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, Brian, I want to go back since we both went to uh, Northwestern. What what stuff do you uh, take from nor your days at Northwestern? Is there anything that you still like keep in mind? <laughs> <laughs> do you do anything from Northwestern? Like, <laughs> well, that's going to leave me to another. It's hundred years ago. It feels like a hundred years ago for so me. So here's another question with that: Do you think college is necessary? I, this is this is even a deeper question. You know, I'm just curious. Your necessary, thoughts on that. necessary is a word I don't use very often. So I don't know yeah. if it's necessary. Yeah, I needed it. I can say 100 percent that I needed it. I came from a high school of 2,500 people which is only 10, 11, 12 grades, a huge high school. There was one black person, there was one Asian person, there was one Jewish person, and we all knew who they were. Mm -hmm. And there were no gay people. And so it was not possible for me to even acknowledge to myself, oh, maybe I'm gay because I couldn't even see a model for that being a place where it would be safe for me to imagine being that. Um, and so I needed a college to be like, oh, there's different people in the world. And because I had that very sheltered life. Uh, I lived, grew up outside of Cleveland. Um, and so Northwestern became like, oh my God, look at all these other cool people in the world. I feel safe feeling different than other people. So I needed to have an environment like that that was safe for me, I would say. Cause I think if I had just like moved to New York city, I would have like, who am I? What am I doing? What is my life? Right. Um, but I don't know if Chicago, I don't know if college is necessary for everybody, but I will say I'm really grateful that I went because I like the way that I relate to information in the world differently um meaning i question the sources of where i get my information it college i think taught me not what to think but uh, maybe a way how to think an analytical piece of my brain and i think that part i really really enjoyed that piece and of course you know i think that if you have a theater training background as an actor it can be very helpful no matter where you where you decide to put that into practice mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know if it's necessary depends on who mm -hmm. you are yeah, I think college is just like a safety net. Like you get to kind of get to learn about you and get to, like you said, learn about the hows of the world. Do I remember stats? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. It's like you kind of no. learn like as a whole. No, but I read yeah. all the books. You know, I read all the Chekhov. I <laughs> sure. can talk about Chekhov. I can talk about Shakespeare. Like, and I like that about myself now. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's like part of what college gave me, I guess. I don't know. Right. Um, I think I think part of, 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 of life uh, especially in the Midwest for some reason, I feel like, it, it, you know, since I'm from Wisconsin, Brian, very close, there's a lot of conformity that happens. And so you feel like you want to conform, you want to kind of fit in in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And then as you get a little older, you're like, maybe I don't want to, and, and maybe you find this in high school, maybe you find it later in college, maybe you find it after that. But I think what's really lovely is kind of coming to the realization you don't have to conform and you don't have mm -hmm. to feel that pressure to you know be what's you know normal or kind of, you know and and you can pick your own path and choices and i think for me that was one of the things that i i not that i exactly found that in, in college but i definitely found it near the end of college when i started singing again corbin i was in a choir all right <laughs> all um, right you're better um, than beyonce <laughs> um but but then you know but i think everyone finding that for themselves and i think that's one of the great things uh, uh i haven't i've only 
you know, spent limited time in, in New York kind of visiting and stuff. But in LA is I feel like people are embraced to be who they are. And, and not that they don't do that in the Midwest, but I think that's such a wonderful thing wherever you could find that to kind of be who you are. And to me, that's one of the coolest things with acting or things like that. As you're working on the business side, then on the craft side, figuring that out and bringing yeah. it to your work. And then it informs the business side, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you try to, I mean, I think that they say your, your personal success, or wait, your, your outward success can only go as far as your personal growth. And acting is one of those few careers where you actually have to focus on yourself as part of the craft, right? Yeah. If you got stuff coming up about your dad, well, your, your scenes with your dad roles are going to be tough for you or whatever it is, right? Um, and that's, I don't say that from a selfish place or that actors are self-centered. I say that from a to better tell stories. That is the work you have to do. And I think that's another piece, you know, when a young actor comes to L.A., they may not be thinking about that. Like, I've done all the work I need to do. I'm ready to just audition and get jobs. Right. Like, I think that that's not fair because I think the craft is, can, you know, Van Gogh doesn't go. I took one art class. I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready. I right. Got like, it. like you got you got. Yeah, I got I got this stuff. What yellow? I've dealt with yellow. I, I know how to paint with yellow. Don't you worry. Right. So like the the continual work on yourself, I think, is a part of uh, what you're talking about when you say, like, discovering who you are. How do you uh, a little bit of a pivot, but how do you balance making um, genuine connections versus like networking? So like kind of it, what it, you guys talking about Northwestern, for example, being obviously that's something that you both agreed with. But I don't know, net networking can be so palpable. And I just am always intrigued yeah. by everybody's version of what they think the difference is between networking and genuine well, connection. I have a whole course on this, so I'm going to break it down nice. in best I can for a <laughs> Right. Which is. Uh, and we also call networking connecting because the word networking is like so gross. Because mm -hmm. I think the reason why we hate the word networking is because it attaches a degree of transaction. Yes. I want this. You have this. Let me get this from you. The problem is we are the ones bringing that to the party. Mm. Right? So I am making every person at any event that I go to into a bouncer and saying, will you let me in your club? As opposed to thinking of them first and thinking of myself first, that's the real truth. I'm lying to myself in that moment and thinking to myself first, oh, I'm a human being and you're a human being. What's going on? How can we connect? Because the truth is, I think a lot of times when we go to networking, it also becomes quantity, not quality. Mm. So I always think if you go to, and let's pretend, I know the world is weird right now, but let's pretend you go to an event because this imagery will work a little better for this, at least for the metaphor. You go to an event and you're like really focused on great, there's this panel of incredible people. I want to meet the people on the panel. I want to connect with them, blah, 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 blah. Cool, but guess what? The universe arranged for those people to be on the panel so that you and the 300 other people in the audience would be attracted to be at that same place on the same night, and the person you're probably supposed to meet <laughs> is the one sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. And they have a whole universe of stars and of galaxies you've never met before, right? And so we focus so much on, I believe that the universe organizes itself in desire. So actor you desire to be an actor which is why john your family have they been to la yes would they have ever come to la if you didn't live here probably not right <laughs> so john's family got the experience of coming to la were those the john, right answers brian did i say the right answers <laughs> the right answer is right okay because good. john desired to be an actor and so because he desired to be an actor he ended up in la which is where did you meet your wife here yeah yeah right that's how the universe connected john to his wife Right. And so our desires lead us like if you're going to get so I even think of this is so this might sound mundane, but like you're an actor. And so you're going to go get headshots. And on your way to the headshot place, you're going to stop at this Starbucks place because that's on the way to the headshot photographer because you desire to be an actor and you desire to get a freaking iced coffee. You met that barista and you stopped into that. That's how the universe organizes us. Right. This is a very Jesuit way of looking at the universe. Right. That, you, that the universe plants desires in us. And so by bringing you together at that event, back to networking, by bringing together that event, the people who are meant to be there are there, and the person next to you is the one that you need to meet more than anybody else. The trick of that, of course, is to also remember everyone there feels like a real shlomo and if they're at a networking event. <laughs> yeah. So the piece of the trick that I always offer people is do not try to be cool. Cool is the death of true connection. Cool is I have other things to do. I'm not going to show excitement. I'm a little bit removed from what's going on here. That's my definition of cool. We don't need any knickies in this room, if you know the musical Grease. <laughs> um, we need like we need we need a lot of more cha-cha de Gregorios. People who are going to go out there and dance on the dance floor, right? <laughs> I don't know why we're using Grease right now, but what you what we need to be able to do is be show enthusiasm to be excitement. So mm -hmm. the death of cool equals the beginning of connection. 
So your willingness to say, oh, what brought you here tonight? Mm -hmm. So it is going to take a touch of vulnerability, but any person you talk to is going to feel calmed and soothed by you treating them like a human being. And that's the real trick. That's the gift you don't realize you give is you return someone to themselves by being normal, for lack of a better word. By not being a weirdo is one of the, that's one of the other values in my business is don't be a weirdo. Don't be weird, not don't be a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. But like if you start to get into your own stuff too much, it just take a second, come back to what you're there for. And I also think that have a good wing person with you. Mm. It's another mm -hmm. good trick. Like, hey, help me not get weird. Let's talk to people tonight. Yes. Right? Like, let's let's say hello to people. Um, did that answer that question? Absolutely. You know, I, I, I love that because it's so, it's so hard to go. One of the things that drives me nutty is when actors don't say that they're actors, you know, because they just are kind of a little bit ashamed of it. Um, right. It, or I'm a waiter. I'm a server. I'm, I'm yeah, kind of an actor. It just spirals like, yeah. down to whatever. But, but in a way, you know, you got to be careful who you say it like there's a way like you said don't be weird like you don't you don't just go to your boss your marketing agent just go i'm an actor and then you got to be smart about it but at the same time you also have to tell people this is the thing i like and this is the stuff what do you like and it doesn't have to be acting it could be like i don't know like you said there's a whole network of people that you know and who knows if their friend knows another friend who knows um, yes Beyonce. Like, I also I think what you up. just said is so important. I always think like there's one thing you can always plan whenever you're going to an event is come up in your mind. So because we get weird when we go to networking events, so first you have to acknowledge, okay, I get weird when I go to networking events. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it hard on myself because I know that that happens for myself. That is a habit that I have of getting weird. So because of that, let me give myself a little crutch before I get there. I'm gonna think of two things: one personal and one professional that I'm excited about right now. Hmm. It does not matter if they're in the future. It does not matter if they're in the past. It doesn't matter if they're tomorrow. So that's part that a lot of people don't believe. So I want to make sure I say that again. It does not matter if they're in the past. It doesn't matter if they're in the future. It doesn't matter if they're today something that you're excited about the, the you do not gauge that thing by which the world decides is exciting you gauge it by what actually excites you so if you're shooting your friend's web series and you're so excited even though it doesn't pay and it's non-union or all the bullshit that you decide to tell people about that makes you feel like you're shitting on yourself sorry bad word again That's fine. sorry john i'm trying <laughs> um so uh is cool, cool, um, cool won't be listening to this my son is out okay is great out. you go yeah um so um the all the things so if you're excited about it that is enough because your genuine excitement is a form of vulnerability saying what you love in this world is a form of vulnerability and that's where connection begins mm -hmm. right well so i think on top of that really too about that. on top what? of that brian i on top of that brian i think passion is contagious mm -hmm. so when you're passionate about something it's contagious yes, you I know what I mean? so yes. i i think there's something that when when you get excited it's got an energy where you know when you're working on a project or you're talking about something there, there's a contagiousness to it that I that totally. I that I that I really love, and I think you know that idea of connection makes me think of of this 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 thing of going deeper rather than wider. A lot of times yeah. we want to go wider and wider and wider, and it's good to kind of re bring that in and and think about going deeper, you know, rather than wider. Yeah, I think you know what you just made me think about is you know I want every actor in the world to become offer only. Like I have a program that's called Become Offer Only because I don't ever just get a job. Like no more auditions. Let's like give you jobs because you've built a network of people who want to work with you so much. And it isn't about the number of people in your network. It's about the people in your network being people that are truly connected to you. And so a lot of times I think actors can buy into this like it's impossible not to get off on the fact that like you got the job and someone didn't. Like there's a little bit of competition that, but like go to CrossFit, okay? Screw off, this doesn't belong in your acting career. And suddenly when you're given a job, it can feel like less important because someone gave you a job john i'm sure you had this experience where you worked for someone and they asked you to come back and do some different commercial or whatever right and so that is the kind of you know depth instead of width that i look for people to have in their connections so that they truly uh connect in that way yeah i i with that brian i think of you want to try to be on the front of people's minds so you know um uh you you did mention that i was thinking i did an episode of happy endings and my buddy called me who was a writer producer on that show and said hey john we need a basketball player who can improvise and i was like me me and are you available you know on thursday uh you know it's a scene with rob riggle and david waynes jr couple and i put the phone down and i was like just take it easy john yeah, I think I'm available. Of course I was available. Um, but, 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 and that doesn't happen very often. But with what you're saying, uh, uh, Brian, being, I, I'd like to think of how can you be on the front of people's minds that, that want you to work, you know, yes. that want to work. That already know you. you. Quit trying to get you. a bunch of strangers at the grocery store to know who you are. You need to just work. Most people, I can't, I don't know 
I don't know that your audience is all of this, but a lot of actors who've been in LA, if you've been here for a few years, you probably know enough people in your career already to have the career that you want. You're just not greasing up on and giving love on those relationships as much as you need to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I'm I, a little, another big pivot, but uh, you, you mentioned uh, wanting to get managers and agents and like how you go about that and kind of in this whole networking sort of realm. Um, I actually don't have an agent or manager, but that is the next step after re- real, all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> yeah. a little fun interaction. You don't here. need a real, but you can work on it if you want to, Corbin. Yeah, I, I feel I feel good about it. I feel like I have everything good. But um, okay. cue I, it up, Corbin. Let's yeah, watch it. Let's, let's have Brian right rip into yeah, it. Yeah, Brian, rip into it. Rip into it, Brian. Destroy it. Ooh, you can just hear our reactions the whole time. We just hear our reactions and not see it. That's a scene you chose? That's a lot of acting, Adam. There's a lot of acting. Um, how do you tee it up with, with, uh, with an agent ranch? Cause they, in a way they're busy, you know, they got stuff going on. So like, what is the best way, what is the best approach to be able to make a genuine connection or be able to make a way to, uh, reach out to that person? Like I obviously have a whole course on this. It's, it's a very distilled version. Yeah, but yeah, just curious sure. what your thoughts are. Some people let people say no and not choose you is the first piece. Sure. The first piece is allow people to not want you and be okay with it. That is the first most important thing. I love a freaking no. I love when someone says no, because then you go, heck yes. I now get to focus on all these people who either haven't responded yet or said yes or said, ask me later, because a no gets you some freedom. So first of all, I pray for no's. That's the first thing. We want to get a bunch of no's mm-hmm. and then in term- so that you can then focus on the ones. The other thing to know, I think about agents, you know, like you said, I've got a whole course on this. So I want to try to give you like my, my most succinct way of understanding. I think that think of them this way. They're the busiest people in the world. Mm-hmm. This is, I like to think of them as think of them as Miranda from Sex and the City, the original. <laughs> okay. Think of them as the grumpy Muppets at the top on the corner during the Muppets show yep. in the night yep. when they're like two old men who would sit yep. in the corner. Um, think of them as Grumpy Cat. Think of them as Ari Gold. <laughs> think of them as Do- uh, Dara. Was her name Dara? The super like the one who had the straight hair animated girl, like very dry, cynical, like doesn't have time for you. That's the kind of perspective I want you to think of them. Now, we know they have huge hearts and they're incredible people underneath it. But when you're connecting, when you're reaching out to them, I want you to think of them as the busiest person in the world who does not have time to suffer fools. Mm -hmm. When you start from that position, the messaging that you send to them is going to be not overly clever, but clear enough and vulnerable enough to say, I'm willing to take a look at Corbin's stuff. Mm -hmm. So I like to think of it as give me enough information to know that I will click on their material. Make it feel like an amuse-bouche. I know what I'm going to get into if I click this. Too many actors, I think, will puff themselves up to sound like super awesome. And if I'm the agent, I'm like, you did a freaking co-star on an investigation ID. Like, mm-hmm. what do you want me to say about your TV credits? Like, this is not someone that I can work with based on. Like, you haven't sold yourself at all to me because what you've done is you've reduced yourself to your credits. Mm-hmm. What I want you to fall in love with, if I'm if I if I'm the if I'm the actor reaching out, is I need that manager agent to fall in love with my future, not my past. So we tend to focus on here are the things I've booked, here's what I've done so far, right? Actually, what we need to focus on, look at what I'm going to book next, because that's what we're going to do together. The problem is if you don't focus on that, you will attract someone based on the resume you already have, and you'll get roles of the exact same level, and you and I both know people who have crap agents and managers that they don't love, and that's how they attracted them in the first place, and so you're never getting the roles you really want because you're just staying at that same exact level. So the trick to me is to position your future, and the way that you do that, I believe, is, you sh- of course you're gonna send them your resume, blah, 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 but you're also gonna connect the dots between the stuff that's happened in your career so far. Mm-hmm. Well, how did this happen? How did this connect to this? Where the almost that you have so many actors are afraid to say, I got a callback for this, mm-hmm. or I got called in directly for this, or I went to producers for this. That doesn't show up on your resume, but guess who didn't go to producers? My client. Mm-hmm. So I needed to see that you got to producers. And I know that casting director, and so I can call. So that kind of almost way to position those almost without sounding delusional. Uh, that's I keep saying delusional because what I have found over and over again is the actor who is the least delusional is the one who gets the most meetings. So, so let me let me say right to, yeah with that yeah. if if Corbin baked a cake and in that cake he put an iPhone <laughs> with his reel on it and then sent it to it hand delivered it to an agent is that delusional <laughs> it's, it's it's more than delusional i feel like there's other issues there are other issues going on there are other issues i already on. did that is that a problem uh, <laughs> I, I, why I don't really... you send them one shoe send them one shoe 
<laughs> and oh, say, good. what's it take to get a <laughs> foot in the door? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's like you witty. That's actually I wanted to say DVD really bad, but I knew DVD would date us. So I didn't say DVD. I said iPhone. What's a DVD? Uh, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, so young. Uh, oh, God. Well, that's great. Well, go away. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk. We need to talk about other stuff. Um, well, Brian, this, this sets us up very nicely for um, – our favorite segment of the show called your okay. best bad acting, buddy, your <laughs> okay, best bad acting. All right. Wait, I'm gonna... supposed to be bad. Okay. Yes. Really you get to channel. be bad. You get to be over the top. Uh, Corbin's going to put a chat in, um, uh, put a quote in the chat and we're going to be quiet and you're going to have fun. However you want to do it. You can give it an accent. You could be dramatic. The idea is just to have fun with it. And we might give you a redirect or not, but it's just, <laughs> you're going to make me a redirect. <laughs> we might give you a redirect, Brian. That's, <laughs> that's means... how we do it. Great. Okay. Okay. And I can do however I want. Do you have to say who said it? It's, it's no. up to you. You don't okay. have to. Yeah. I love scotch. Scotchy scotch scotch. Here it goes down, down in my belly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to look at the camera. I didn't know my lines yet. Okay. So I okay. Look over yeah. here do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. Let's do it again. Okay. Let me I might do a different take though. Let's just think love it. Way. Oh, I like this. Oh, okay, okay. <sighs> I love scotch. Scotchity, scotch, scotch, scotch. Mm. Down in my belly. Mm. <laughs> down, down into my belly. I did a little improvising of the line. I love you, it. I love it. you owned it. Yeah, oh, it got real. It got real flirty in there, Brian. It got real flirty in there. Okay, Corbin, do you have a do you have a redirect? Uh, I feel like this is a weird one, but I feel like you are. Where's your favorite place to travel outside of the United States? Ooh. Outside of the United States, oh, I was uh, Japan. Japan. How would you? So, if you sure. were at at, din at dinner at Japan, you know, getting some sushi or ramen or something like, what would, what would that yes. like kind of look like? See, so you're like cozy. You're having a good time. You're in a foreign land. What would that be? Oh, I'm cozy. I was not making. Oh, it doesn't have cozy, to be cozy. So <laughs> I, I got. No, I was like very uncomfortable in a very fancy I, restaurant. So I was over directing. You do what you want. Right. Okay. So I'm ordering. So okay. So I'm kind of okay. Mm, I love scotch. Scotchy scotch scotch. <laughs> Here it goes. Down 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 in my belly. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm also kind of a crazy person in Japan. I just yeah. want to throw that out. That was like yeah. a crazy person. In Japan. I'll never travel okay. with you, but that's fine. <laughs> I, I've got a good one for you, Brian. I want to see right. you doing Johnny Depp being his character in Pirates of the Caribbean. How would that? Uh, what's that character's name? Why am I blanking? Uh, Jack Captain, Jack yeah. Captain, Captain Jack Black. Captain Jack Black. Captain Jack Black. That do that. All right. Okay. Wait. I, I just Sparrow. need you to know that there's no recollection in my brain of. Johnny Depp in that movie. That's so this, this is, is really uh, just going to be be a pirate. That's beautiful. <laughs> just, just do pirate. All right. I love scotch. Scotchy to scotch, scotch. Here it goes. Down, down in my belly. Mm. <laughs> Good. Good. Oh, that was great. That was awesome. Uh, oh, my gosh. Brian, thank you for jumping in with both feet. That was thank hilarious. You. Oh, thank you for gosh. letting me do it. I appreciate it. <laughs> And that that was Ron Burgundy from Anchorman, Brian's version of it, which I enjoyed so much. So much fun. <laughs> uh, well, Brian, thank you so much for your time. This was really enlightening, and mm -hmm. I really um, appreciate everything you had to say. Thanks. I think you know uh, people have probably heard it before, but that idea of like you know show business, there's a business side that people need to address, whether they are dragging their feet on it or not. So I think it's great what you're doing, helping people out with with that side of things. Um, you know, along with the craft, I think those two things with the craft and then the business side, you gotta, you gotta work on both those. So I yeah. think it's, it's great and nice. really a lot of laughs today. So thank you so much for your for time. Sure. We, we really, uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I love being here. I love the questions and I love spending time smiling at you two guys. <laughs> yeah. you guys hope Thanks, you, Brian. Well, if you guys are just listening and not watching this on YouTube, you should really watch on YouTube because they're cute <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to keep up brian we're just trying to keep up with you we bring it up You're, every episode you, nobody nobody jumps on <laughs> no one, no, no. we're cute you guys no, come no. on <laughs> they're cute oh, awesome well brian thank you so much for your time we really appreciate it and i'm sure thanks. we'll be bumping into you soon thanks, great brian. thank you so much bye Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to another fun episode of The Moving so Spotlight, fun. right? That was a good one. Uh, today, we're not going to ask you to rate and review us. In fact, we're going to let you get to know John Ruby and Corbin Coyle a little bit better. Yeah. That's right. You can find me uh, on Facebook if you want under John Ruby. You can also find me on Instagram under John 
five, Ruby. Corbin, mm. what about you? Where do you want to be found online? <laughs> uh, I am mostly on Instagram. I also have Facebook, so you can find me on Facebook as Corbin Coyle, but I'm mainly on Instagram. So uh, Corbin underscore Coyle. Uh, just uh, hit me up there. I'd love to see you. And we also have the moving spotlight if you want to see us there and all our episodes that are coming up. Uh, some pretty pictures of all our guests. It's great. And we're not yet on TikTok, but we will be <laughs> it's true. at some point. <laughs> Once we figure it out. <laughs> Once we figure out what it is, I've heard of it. Uh, we'll be on there too. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening and see you next time. Thanks. See you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Moving Spotlight Podcast.